Welcome to our lecture online. Now we're working on part three of the same problem that we started with, where we're dealing with two separate particles moving in some fashion, and we're trying to find the velocity between them, one relative to the other, at time equals pi over three seconds. In the third part, we're dealing with two oscillators, oscillator B and oscillator A, and the position of the oscillators is defined by those two equations. Now remember, we're supposed to find the relative velocity, the magnitude of the relative velocity between the two particles at that moment in time, and we should then match it up with one of these answers. And of course, since we're working on part three right here, we would expect the answer to be P, because in the first two parts, we already determined that we can find the solution to the whole problem if we choose uh, S for part one and T for part two, and that's what we did on the first two parts. But of course, it's a learning experience to go to the other two parts. If this was a test, you just simply move on to the next question, and you forget about part three and part four. All right, so here's the two particles. We have the two equations. Also, they tell us that, uh, let's see here, that x sub zero is one and t sub zero is one. So we can actually rewrite those two equations as follows. We can write that x sub a is equal to one times the sine of t over t sub naught, which is simply the sine of t. And here, x sub b, that can then be written as one times the sine of t over t sub naught, which is one, so that would be t plus pi over two. Now remember, since we're trying to find the relative the magnitude and the relative velocities, we're trying to find VA minus VB and the absolute value. So that's essentially what we're trying to find. Since we're given the position, what we're going to do is take the derivative of, the, of those two functions to find the velocity. Because we know that the velocity is equal to dx dt, and so in this case, velocity of A is equal to dx sub A dt, and so the derivative of the sine is equal to the cosine of t. Here, we have the the, uh, well, actually what I wanted to write was the velocity. Let's do that. So the velocity of B is equal to uh, the derivative of x sub B with respect to time. And so here we take the derivative sign as the cosine of t plus pi over 2. And the derivative of the angle is equal to 1, so we don't have to worry about that. All right, so now we have the velocities. Now we need to take the difference of velocity when time is pi over 3, so what we're going to do is plug in pi over 3 and pi over 3 over here. So that means that v sub a, when time equals pi over 3, is equal to the cosine of pi over 3. Over here, we could say that uh, v sub b, uh, when time is equal to pi over 3, 3, there we go, that's equal to the cosine of pi over 3 plus pi over 2. Well, we should combine those two. Uh, the common denominator is 6, so we have 2 plus 3, that would be 5 pi over 6. So that's the cosine of 5 pi over 6, like this. All right, now let's evaluate these two. So now v of a is equal to the cosine of pi over 3. Now that's 60 degrees, the cosine of 60 is 1 half. And v of b is equal to the cosine of 5 pi over 6. 5 pi over 6, that would be 150 degrees. That would be uh, minus the square root of 3 over 2. All right, so now, of course, remember, we want to find the magnitude of the difference of those two velocities. So we're looking for VA minus VB, and of course, we want the, the magnitude of that. And so this is equal to the magnitude of VA, which is one half, minus a minus square root of three over two, like this. Of course, minus times a minus is a plus, so we can take off the absolute value signs. So essentially, we end up with one half plus the square root of three over two, which could be written as one plus the square root of three over two, like that. And notice when you take a look at the answers, we found an answer, it's right here. Of course, it's reversed, doesn't matter. So that's the answer, that is the letter P. And so that means that for the third part, P is correct, which means it's either this 
or this. Of course, we know that A can no longer be the solution because for part one we did not get the solution R, but you can see that we're still consistent. This time we found the correct answer for part three, and so we're still on track to say that C is the correct answer for this particular problem. Of course, now we're going to do part four in the next video, and we would expect the answer to be R, the square root of 10. Well, let's try it and see if we get that on the next go-around.